All right, so welcome to Dreadnought Redux Part 12. And last time I started on the uh, mess halls, so I'm going to see if I can't continue that fine tradition. And uh, well, after making this a very, shall we say, messy episode with all the mess halls, let's see. Yeah, there's a band instrument room right there. That right? Is her room? Yep. Okay. Dispensary, water closet, sick bay, and another series of officers' cabins, except for four is the engineer's office, and 33. Okay. So that's an office. But everything else is a cabin. Sweet! Okay. I can work with that. Go! Cool. Alright. Okay, good. I didn't totally lose my place. <laughs> that would not have been good. Alright. Let's get to the time lapsing. All right. Now this is going to be a fairly repetitive episode, but uh, again, that's always seems to be the thing with me and photo etch because there's just so many goddamn little pieces. So here I am folding up the table, going to lay it in one position, and then I, I glue it down, and then I lay the other table in another position right next to it. Uh, then I start trying to fit a chair in between. We'll see how long that takes for me to get the, you know, to the point where I start cutting out little metal chairs. Because, you know, can't have a mess hall without chairs. So it takes a bit for me to shift this, um, to shift this table around. And a lot of that fiddling, I think, is in part, just a tiny part, because evidently these little small metal pieces are light enough to be moved by static electricity generated probably between my butt and the chair. So, yeah, that adds just, yeah, that, that makes uh, moving things just that little bit more interesting. Uh, anyway, so here I am finally cutting out the uh, little sets of chairs. And I fold one up and I try to put one um, in between the two uh, sets of tables. Hoping maybe I can get three in there. Turns out I can't. Turns out it just doesn't want to work for me. So after a bit of finagling there, what I end up doing is I actually end up, um, after several tries, uh, give, say, giving up and saying to myself, okay, got to remove the uh, second table then to populate the first in that area and then put uh, some other chairs down. So essentially what I do is I put down the first table, then I put the chairs under it that'll go in between the two tables, and then I put the other, you know, two chairs behind that, the ones that'd be facing under the second table, and then I put the second table down, and then I put the last two chairs. Um, I haven't, I've yet before the, uh, this, uh, yeah, I have yet to, uh, at the time of recording, put that last chair in there, but I do have a little bit of fun at the end of this, uh, high speed section so yeah i guess a couple little things about dealing with photo etch this small i'm quite sure the most obvious things are have reasonably good eyes or good glasses that you can see through as well as having a um reasonably steady hand but there is an even more important thing that i have found to having good high quality results in DIY photo etch. At least at this scale for me, it is a tolerance of disturbingly high attrition rates. Now I guess that makes sense. This did come from World War I and <laughs> human lives were cheap on the Western and the Eastern Front. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Passchendaele and Attack of the Dead Men, I think, on the other side of that. <laughs> yeah, I think Attack of the Dead Men was like a Russian fort, so that's what I mean. Not like from the Germans, I mean, like, the Sabaton made a song about it, and it was awesome, and the story was also pretty cool, if not a bit sad. But anyways, yeah, um... So there I am, cutting more and more chairs out. Now, you'll probably notice that I have lost a bunch of these. I, I have probably lost more photo etch pieces than I have put onto this model, in all honesty. That's how high the attrition rates are. So here I am, I'm folding up a chair, 
and slowly but surely I think this might be the ones I either put uh, between the wall and the table or I put behind the other two chairs before putting down the second one let's see okay so I put it between the wall and the table then and now I'm scraping up my little uh, super glue applicator because well that's one that needs scraping out but yeah I really can't think of something that gets as good a job as this does at this small of a scale I mean you can see me trying to put in with the tweezers and then having mixed results at best um, having to clean things out and I might have lost this piece due to again that attrition thing but well such is life sometimes you know, dipping them in their own super glue works sometimes it doesn't so the reason I brought out the Tamiya right there was just because that wall was a bit flimsy. I was hoping that that would kind of bring it back into its position. Because once these walls are in their position and glued down, they're, they're actually reasonably sturdy. So there we go. Laying that piece in there. Yeah, that is a big thing with dealing with these chairs. It is, even, these, even though these Kirby tweezers do it less often, they will still cause the little chair thing to go tink, and then it's gone. Yeah, that's part of what I mean by the high attrition rates, and apparently that must have happened because now I'm folding another chair and trying to get it in there into that spot between the uh, wall and the table, I think. Eh. Hunting for it. Grabbing another one, folding it up again. Uh, yes, the eternal struggle of trying to get photo etched to not spin off in a random direction. I had this problem a bit too with even the bigger photo etch pieces, just because they're you know how delicate they get. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully, when I do it for more of the B17 or the Bismarck, I will have made good progress in my abilities to do photo etch okay so there is a bit more of me just getting at things i think i got that one into the uh, table and now i might be folding it to put these in between the tables yep there we go a little jump there that little thing of me messing with the phone was to make sure that this camera was on i think so here we go Another fold, and again, I've been using the tweezers to fold because I don't have the fancy schmancy uh, fixer to do it, um, but I haven't needed it as of yet, although it might be a good idea in the future just because of how thin I'm folding and how crisp it, th that might be able to get the folds. But that's neither here nor there because we are about to go to a very brief but hopefully hilarious section at normal speed. Well, I demonstrate a little something about how long this has taken so far. I don't know, guys. It took me well over an hour, and I still haven't gotten done setting these tables up for eight people yet. Penny, for your thoughts? All right. All, you know, small coin jokes aside, the reason it was a penny, not a dime, is because uh, I just didn't have one on me. I should like save one somewhere in the shop just every once in a while drop next to something because yeah I, I i have to admit this is tiny because this is the only way i can feel anywhere near good about it. just how many of these little pieces i have lost i'm see I, I yeah it's i i've made jokes about the attrition rates before but i think that uh you know these little guys that if they were people they'd have a better chance of surviving like what was it, the Battle of the Somme, where the Brits lost 60,000 in a single day? Th then they would actually successfully getting into this dreadnought. <laughs> okay, okay, I honestly don't think I'm that bad, but I'm not keeping casualty figures, let's put it that way. Uh, oh, and I've still got a sick bay to do, so... Okay, I, I've digressed way too far. So as you see, I am essentially keeping up the tradition of bend with big flat tweezers, use small tweezers to dip into a pool of super glue, hope it doesn't stick to the um, tweezers too hard, cry when that always fails, and then proceed to try it again until it does work because I am insane 
and I will do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result and oddly enough it does sort of work from time to time not always but in this case it does quite a bit uh, what you saw there is one of the pieces fell wrong out of the tweezers and didn't want to stay in place and then just made my life harder so um, again, the way I get these guys to sit here is the same as I've done with the other uh, guys in the other uh, mess hall, which is to cut them off at the, their legs so they don't have legs anymore. Uh, hmm. Wonder if I should put one in the sick bay as a joke. <laughs> That's a bit morbid. Okay, it's appropriate because this is a World War I warship, but still. And it's a World War I British battleship, so I think the word death trap may apply, considering the Battle of Jutland and, uh, what was it, Beatty or something, asked what the hell was wrong with their ships that day. Uh, I've made a joke about that before in this channel, either before Copa or after, and I've forgotten where. But, uh, yeah, so here I am again, using sometimes multiple tweezers to try to peel this uh, little people off and put them into the chairs. I haven't thought of any sure-fire magic bullet way to do this, unfortunately. The only way I can think of is maybe if I got one of those um, like high-gauge hypodermic needle things to do this with. I'd have, and I, then I'd have to get really slow drying glue if it was available. I would have to go looking for the correct adhesive. Although... All things considered, I have a fair amount of uh, fun cash saved up because this is my fun right now, that and taking the kids fishing. Kids like it. One of them's a little too young to go, but the others seem pretty pleased with it. Um, but yeah, back to this. So yeah, again, fold with flat tweezers, grab with the little tweezers, and then hope and pray that I can get it in a nice place where it stays Put. Um, then cut this guy free. Yeah, that guy seemed to have gone in nicely. Alright. Keep bending. Keep moving. La -dee da I think I found a good camera angle this time around too. I mean you can actually, you get glimpses of what I'm actually doing. That or I'm just more conscious of where it is because it's staring right at my, you know, hands. I wonder if we should call this the, you know, you know, Dreadnought 12 or Richard's Harry Arms 1. <laughs> oh, well, I really am putting in some thought, though, into making a solution to that, but we'll see if I do it or not. All right, we're about to get to a uh, normal speed segment, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, audio commentary off here. All right. Well, it almost took about 30 minutes, but I finally got... Uh... All eight of these guys here for dinner. <laughs> mm, the, uh, I'm sure I have said it before. I think my secret to doing this is a tolerance for disturbingly high attrition rates. <laughs> uh, Alright. Back to work. And this is the last segment of this video that'll be time-lapse just because... The camera decided that it was out of memory because I forgot to delete some files from it because eh, I guess I just want my technology to just work. I know I shouldn't think like this, but my preferred operating system is Linux, so I'm actually used to my computers and things just working. Grum grumble, grumble, I never got a blue screen on Linux that I didn't cause myself. Grumble, grumble. Uh, so here I am making a shelf for the band room. Uh, I'm doing that by my typical cut a shelf down, put in the uh, piece of plastic, glue it down. I make another shelf in a similar manner. I don't glue the thing into it, though. Not sure why I didn't just... didn't Got lazy, I guess. Didn't feel like it. It still looks good, though, either way. It took a bit of... Yeah, so that what happened there was some super glue got on my finger and the thing, so I had to kind of peel it off carefully. And here's me, uh, I've done this a few times, I'm sure, in the video, cleaning off the uh, super glue applicator in an attempt. Here I'm just putting it in that mess room, and here some guys fell around. And I'm fixing that, shaking things out to make sure that the guy's out nicely before realizing that he's trapped somewhere and I have to glue him in. 
another one and then cleaning off the applicator again and putting in a new uh but some more bits of glue just to really secure things down all right so we are rapidly approaching the end of this uh, segment and so i hope you all enjoyed uh, not much new stuff to talk about here today, but I hope it was at least amusing for you, and if not, I hope my voice is soothing to you. Here we are. And back to shaky smartphone footage. So, as you can see, we have one mess hall full, one empty, and the band instrument room there, ready to go. So, moving right along here. Come on, get a good focus. There we go. Painting that room is going to be a challenge. So, yeah, I was going to do more of this on the main camera, but then it ran out of memory because it only has a 32 gigabyte memory card. It's not a bad camera. It's really not. It's just not perfect for my needs like this phone actually was. <sighs> oh, well, life happens. So... In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get some filming, uh, get some film editing done and crank this uh, part 12 out and hope you enjoyed and I will see you for part 13 soon. Peace out.